Hello, Andrea Tarowski here with Dental L Tutoring. You are watching this video because you're curious about the dental hygiene program. So either you are thinking about taking the dental hygiene program or you've heard about the dental hygiene program. Maybe you've always wanted to get into the dental hygiene program or you are currently in the program. So let me tell you exactly how it is, okay? Because you might have heard horror stories, you might have heard things are amazing, don't listen to anybody, and you might be thinking, well, why am I telling you how the dental hygiene program is? So I took the dental hygiene program twice, okay? Not because I failed, but because the first time I took the program, my school actually went bankrupt three weeks before I was supposed to graduate. So you're pretty much done at that point. You've learned everything you have to know, but I had to take the whole thing over again. So you might be thinking, okay, so then the dental hygiene program must be worth it. It must be worth it to be a dental hygienist if you took the program twice, paid for it, and look at where I am now and I'm still happy and smiling, right? Okay, but yes, the dental hygiene program is worth it. It is so worth it to be a dental hygienist. But let me tell you the truth. At least in Canada, it depends on where you live. I live in um, Woodstock, Ontario, Canada, so it could be different from where you live. But let me tell you the truth on one thing that not a lot of people will admit to you, especially dental hygienists. We don't get paid nearly as much as we used to. We don't. We used to make $10 more, at least that. Um, when I graduated actually from dental assisting school, um, about 13 years ago now, I was talking to a dental hygienist who came into our office to talk about wanting to be a dental hygienist if that is what you wanted to do. Because at that time, if you became um, a dental assistant first, you were automatically able to take the dental hygiene program. But it's not like that anymore. But um, she told us honestly, and again, it depends on where you live, but she told us you can make $45 per hour starting out. And that's pretty amazing, especially if you think about 13 years ago, that's pretty darn awesome, right? Nowadays, starting out, and I'll say it again, at least in Canada where I live, Starting out, you could be making $25 per hour. You shouldn't be making that low. Um, I tell my students to ask for at least 29 or 30. Preferably 30, but a lot of offices might say to you, well, you don't have experience yet. We'll pay you 28 to 29 until you have a year experience, and then we will pay you more. But that's another story for another day, how to negotiate getting a raise and how to negotiate getting paid what you're worth. But that's another video for another day. But that's a, a hard truth, is that we don't make $45 per hour anymore. We are lucky to make $30 per hour. And, and that's starting out. If you've been working for five years, I know at least two handfuls, three handfuls of hygienists that have been working for 20 years and don't make $35 per hour per hour, and I'm being honest. It does depend on the office though, where you work in. It depends on the type of hygienist you are too. Like if you call in sick every other day, if you're only available twice a week, you are not going to get paid as much as somebody's there who's, who's full time and somebody who shows up every single day but it does depend on who you work for. If your boss doesn't like to give you any raises, you're not going to get one. If your boss pays the office typically very low, you are not going to get paid a very high amount, right? So it depends on the office. But that's always a question that students ask me is how much can I expect to get paid and how much can I ask for starting out? So it does depend on you. It depends on the office. It depends on a lot of things. But I guess in a nutshell, let's say to ask for $30 per hour starting out. If you've been working for a long time and you make $30 per hour, you need to ask for more, okay? Let me just tell you that. But um, anyway, so that's the truth. We don't get paid as much as we used to, but making $30 per hour starting is pretty awesome though, right? Like that's not bad at all. It's awesome. Do you have to work hard, long hours? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on you and it depends on the office, right?
So um, that's just something that I wanted to talk about first, is that we don't make as much as we used to, but we still make a good amount. I mean, if I was to be a dental assistant, they make even less. I don't know how much they make now, but 13 years ago, I made $13 per hour starting out as a dental assistant. So clearly, when I became a hygienist, I believe starting out as a hygienist, but this was several years ago, I made, I believe, 25 per hour. I'm not sure, though, because this was a while ago. But clearly, to go from $13 per hour to 25 is amazing. I thought I was rich. So to even make $30 per hour starting out is awesome. So we can't complain. And being a dental hygienist is amazing. It is awesome because you will be able to see all kinds of different people every single day. I've been in the dental field now for 13 years in total, and, and I love a lot of my patients. I couldn't imagine not seeing them, right? Now, I'm a, I'm a tutor now, so I work a little bit less than part-time. Do I have to work? No, because I tutor, and I tutor a lot. I have owned my own tutoring business for 13 years now. I could easily do that. And from tutoring, I, I work from home, I set my own hours, I make a lot more than $30 per hour, just being honest, but I love the patients. So that's why I still work in the dental office. So um, other questions that people typically have is, what is a day like for a dental hygienist? It, it can be busy, I'm being honest. Like I see maybe depending on the office, you might be seeing eight patients a day, you might be seeing six, you might have half an hour appointments per patient, which is not a lot of time. You may have an hour appointment per patient, you will be their therapist because they will talk to you about everything. You will be expected to know a little bit about everything. You will be expected to keep the dentist on time you will get yelled at if you aren't on time, even if the dentist is the one who's behind and takes forever to come in for a check or for a recall. Um, it's their fault you're behind, but patients will yell at you because you are behind. I'd say that that's the most annoying part for me, being a dental hygienist, is that I can never seem to stay on time. Even if, if I'm doing awesome, Something always happens where I'm not on time. You know, your patient could come in late. Um, your patient could have so much plaque and tartar that it takes you an extra 10 minutes and then you're behind for the rest of the day. Sometimes I don't get a lunch. Again, I'm just being honest. Sometimes my hour lunch turns into a half an hour lunch. Sometimes it turns into a five minute lunch. It all depends on your patient. So if any patients are watching this, probably not. Don't be late for your dental appointments because if you are late, even five minutes, your poor hy um, hygienist, your poor assistant probably won't have a lunch. Your poor, you know, dental professional will be running to the bathroom when she has to use the washroom because she knows when she has to run to the washroom, she is wasting time, right? And that's always the, the um, hardest part for me, even 13 years later, is being behind. I don't like it. Um, if your day is nine to five, you have to be there a half an hour early to set up your trays, look through your charts, you know, set up just everything. Um, and if you think you'll be done at five o'clock, you will not be because things always happen. This is healthcare. You won't be done at five o'clock. So tell your boyfriend, husband, fiance, um, girlfriend that you won't be home at five o'clock. You'll probably be home at 5.30 or, well, I shouldn't say home, but you'll be done at 5.30. You might be done at 6. Like, I've been telling my fiancé, um, we've known each other now for three years, and if I have a 9 to 5 shift, he knows that I have to be there at 8.30, and he knows I'll probably be done around 6 o'clock. So he doesn't rush to make dinner or whatever. So that's just how it is. So if you need to have a 9 to 5 job, dental hygiene, Hygiene is not for you, trust me, because you will never be done at five o'clock. Um, unless the patient cancels, then you might be. Um, and for the dental offices, you will likely have to work one evening a week. So if you don't like to work evenings, 
suck it up because you will have to, especially if you are the new one in the office, you will be stuck working the evenings. Um, I know when I first started, I worked three evenings a week plus Saturdays, but it was because I was excited to work. I wanted the money. I needed the money to pay off school because I took the program twice, right? I, ne I needed the money. I wanted the money, but more importantly, I wanted the experience. So I wanted to work as much as possible. I was young, so I didn't mind working eight hour, 10 hours a day, every single day, plus evenings, because I didn't really have much of a life back then anyway. Would I work three evenings now and weekends? No, because I'm 30, almost 31. I don't feel that I have to, and now I feel like I have a life, so that's just not something that I would want to do. But if you're new, be prepared to work at least one evening sh uh, shift. And by evening, it's usually 9 o'clock at, at the latest, which is late. Um, some offices are open until 7 or 8, but it's at least 9, or it's usually around 9. Um, the earliest you would likely have to start is 7 in the morning, but not too many offices are open that early. Again, it depends on where you live. And if you're new, be prepared to work Saturdays. I don't know a lot of offices that are open on Sundays, but be prepared to work Saturdays. And if you're new, suck it up, be happy, smile, help out, just be awesome. Because if you're new, everybody else in the office will be looking at you a little bit. They'll be listening to how you talk to patients. They'll be sizing you up. You know, that's just what we all, that's just what we do, you know? Um, so be happy, be excited to work evenings, weekends, whatever. And remember, patients can tell if you don't like what you're doing. So if you don't like it, you're in the wrong program, you're in the wrong career, you need to be happy for your patients. You need to be excited. If they don't brush and floss, get over it. Don't yell at them. Simply just talk to them and educate them on brushing and flossing, okay? Because I can't tell you how many times I have heard patients say, oh, I'm supposed to brush every day. I thought it was like once every couple days or something, right? You may be thinking, ew, that's horrible. What the heck? But you got to be nice to them. You know, educate them. Because if you're mean to them, they're not going to come back. And what's the point, you know? Are you their mom or dad? No. So there's no point being mean to a poor patient who just doesn't understand that they need to brush and floss every day, you know? And they're not doing it on purpose. They're not, not understanding on purpose. Maybe their parents don't brush every day. That's how they learn. Maybe their boyfriend or girlfriend told them that they don't have to, so they don't, you know. Be nice to your patients. I can't say that enough. And I say this because I've seen hygienists and assistants who are mean to their patients, and then the patients don't want to come back. And then I see all of the patients that didn't like their other hygienists because they were mean to them. And those are usually the patients who don't brush or floss. So I have to see patients with a lot of plaque and a lot of tartar all the time. So just be nice to your patients. Um, another thing you should know is you need to learn how to take excellent x-rays. Don't be afraid to take x-rays. If you need help, get the help. You know what? Shadow at an office. Get the help to take excellent x-rays because if you don't, the office will not like you. If there's another assistant there that has to constantly retake your x-rays, they will not like you. Now, if you're new, it is a learning curve, but that is what school is for, right? You should have learned to take x-rays in school. So if you're not sure, get the help you need now. So when you start to work in the office, you're awesome. Um, okay, so I think I've talked enough today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Any questions, though, or if I didn't go over something, let me know. Just comment in the video below, and then I will be happy to help. So stay tuned for the next video and I will see you all very, very soon. See you later.